Man, it is just glorious to see some green growing life. I tell you what, it is good for the soul. I think it's really important to know how to make medicines and to gather food and to, to harvest what you need from the land around you. And Arnica is a really easy one. The plants are easy to identify. The medicine is incredibly powerful and useful. And it's a wonderful thing to have in your medicinal toolkit. Well, here you can, the first flower head. First one. They're one of the early blossoming flowers and they tend to grow in like big clumps of arnica. So when you find it, you tend to find a lot of it. This is a lovely patch of heart leaf arnica or arnica cordifolia is the Latin name for the plant. And not all arnicas are medicinal, but this arnica is a medicinal species. The flowers look like a little sunflower. They're beautiful and yellow and really stand out. The plant itself has really, really distinctive heart-shaped leaves. We find it a lot in these montane areas. Um, and then this area in particular that we're in, there was a fire about a year and a half ago, a late season ground fire. And you can see that the Arnica has responded to the fire by flowering prolifically. So if we harvest the ones that we just target the ones that are open, there's gonna be a whole other crop that pops up here when we leave. And so our impact will be even less noticeable. So here we've done cold infusion with arnica flowers in olive oil. And so we are gonna make a salve out of the oil. Half to three quarter full with the flour and then I top that off with olive oil. With the arnica, it's not a very different color from the olive oil that it started with, but it is definitely more yellow. So again, about three months and you're ready to go. To make the salve, I'm going to pour the oil through a strainer or a cheesecloth. I wanna catch any bits of the flour. I don't want that going through. I wring that out really good because there's a lot of oil that's just kind of like contained in that mass of flours. And so my ratios are gonna be about eight ounces of oil to one to 1.5 ounces of beeswax. I also added some vitamin E because it helps to preserve your salve, heat up my beeswax, and you wanna do that very slowly, right? I don't wanna burn anything. It's on the verge of boiling right now. And then I add the oil. A cup's worth. And the oil immediately, of course, solidifies your wax. So then that needs to, again, turn into a liquid. And then once it is a liquid, I can pour it off into jars. Pretty low intensity work. The harvesting's usually pretty easy. Making the infused oil, it just happens while you're away. You're not really doing much, but checking on it. And then making salves is kind of just an enjoyable afternoon's activity. And you come away with a lot of medicine uh, as a result of that. I refer to it as being both like powerful and gentle because it works really well, but it's not gonna be like the knockout punch of like ibuprofen or like some over-the-counter something like that. It is, it is on the gentler side for muscle pain or joint pain, but it really does work. And so I swear by this stuff and I use it a lot. There are things that you need to know about it. It is for external use only. You absolutely do not want to ingest Arnica. It will wreck you. It is so um, inflammatory and, uh, and potentially toxic to your digestive tract that it would do some incredible damage. So external use only. 
For that same reason, you don't want to use it on broken skin. So don't put it on cuts, don't put it on like road rash or something like that from a crash. Uh, you don't want it getting into your bloodstream. So for cuts, for uh, open wounds and things like that, that's where the cottonwood salve really comes in because that stuff's gonna be like nature's neosporin. It's gonna really help heal that. It's gonna keep infection down. <laughs> As later you like rub down your aching knee from whatever adventure. Remember that we harvested this Arnica. I love being able to help to facilitate connection to the natural world for people. Um, my personal mission in everything I do is wanting to foster that connection and encourage that connection. And I love doing these walks with Mary Rose because I just very much appreciate uh, her, her kindness and her company and her enthusiasm for these things and her willingness to share. Her heart and her love for the plants in the natural world really comes across to people. And I think that's also really important uh, because it, it draws people in. I am not a botanist. I know a number of plants, but I don't know them as well. And so Mary Rose is, is intimately knowledgeable about that forest community. And she is able to facilitate these connections for people in a way that's clearly deeply meaningful to them. People being able to know the names of some of the plants that they're seeing helps people, when we form connections with things, we name them. When people are seeking out a name, if you can provide it, um, people are always so delighted to know the name of a, of a plant. I'm always, I'm always so surprised at um, the joy that people get from, from knowing names and, and knowing their relationships to other plants and insects and insect pollinators. It's pretty neat. People just delight in, in the knowing and in the learning. And they like being able to make some kind of a direct connection like, oh, this plant is important to this pollinator or, or it's medicinal in some way. And maybe it's medicinal for both a pollinator and a person. And we share this, this need and desire for this medicine from this plant. Right. And so being able to bring in different levels of connection for people, really I think it, it uh, completes the picture and creates a more intimate understanding of, of the natural world. And right. so I think being able to offer all of that stuff to them is, is really uh, quite meaningful. For me to just be out in this and um, yeah, spend my day outside among the plants. It really is, yeah, it just really, I come home happy. Yeah, for me it's just like year by year I want to do a little better and learn a little more and, and engage the natural world a little bit more directly for the things that I need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a great way to spend a day. <laughs> There are certainly worse ways to spend a day. Yeah, things and stuff. Stuff and things. <laughs> Always, all the things. Here on Montana Bushcraft, we emphasize the things, also the stuff. A little bit of whatnot, we cover it all.